This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the podcast Under the Stairs. This is a Winter Reviews a Horror Movie episode. This is technically our second season. Uh, This is Winter, my daughter. Hi. And we're back. Um, We've not done one of these since last Um, year. Last year. The last one was, I think it was Friday the 13th part 3. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we did that just before we went to Japan. Yeah. So we have returned, we have decided that you've had enough of found footage movies so this year because it's the summer holidays for you off school um, we're going to kick up a brand new season and season 2 is going to be looking at slasher type movies not purely slasher movies because you have slasher purists out there who will say some of these movies aren't slasher movies and I can't be bothered with that conversation so slasher type movies we're going to be covering and uh, for the first one I've picked for you you're next yeah. Which technically came out in 2013 um, slash 2014, but I think it had been doing the festival run in 2012. So it's been around for a while now, um, just yeah. a wee bit older than you. Now, before we jump into too much information and too much conversation, yeah. um, we have changed the skull rating this season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So do we want to, the skull rating before was based on what? It was based on how... Um, how many times it jump scared me? Yeah, so in, in um, found footage movies, tons of jump scares, right? So yeah. there was a chance that, in fact, not many movies got a huge amount of skulls. Um, but in this one, what we've decided to do is go for badass kills, yeah. right? So where you're like that, that kill was rad, dad. Even though you would never use the word rad. Um, when you'd be like that, that kill was rad, dad. That's when we're going to put that, okay, that gets a skull. Yeah. So we're going to cover all the kills at the end and you're going to tell me yes or no. The maximum the movie can get is five. Five, yeah. Right, so if, it, if there was like ten rad kills, it would still only get a five. Yeah. I like this, I like this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, slasher movies, you have seen a few before, believe it or not. Have I? Yeah, so Halloween's probably considered the biggest slasher movie ever made. Because it's the one that kind of technically set everything off. You've seen a couple of the Friday the 13th movies, those yeah. are slashers. You have seen a couple of Scream movies. I yeah, yeah. I think I've seen two. You've seen Scream seen... and Scream Two. So no, in fact, you saw Scream and then the reboot Scream movie. Yeah, I that's right. So those are both slasher movies. So you've seen those, and then there's other little ones we've seen in between that are kind of kind of slasher. Did you watch the final Girls with me? No. Where the girls, like she gets zapped into the horror movie her mum starred in. I think you did. Did I? Yeah. Remember, her mum dies in a car crash at the beginning. And then she goes with her friends to the cinema and then there's an accident she gets zapped into a movie. No. And it loops around. You never watched that movie? No. Movie? You're going to love it. It might it might end up on the six because it's a it's, it's a good one to focus on. We all, we had to choose between a couple of different movies tonight. We sort of, kind of, we sort of landed on your next because... It came into my head as something we could watch and I got very excited about it because it's been a, a few years since I've watched it. But the other movies that were up on the list, it'd be interesting to hear from the listeners if they would like to see you do a review of them later on. Uh, but one of them is your, You Might Be The Killer, mm-hmm. which you quite like to look at the trailer of that one. Yeah. Uh, the Thanksgiving, the Eli Roth movie from last year, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is a ton of fun. It's pretty nasty, but a ton of fun. Oh. And the last one was Stage Fright. Stage Fright, which um, is a kind of horror musical. There's a lot yeah. of like musical stuff that happens in it, but it's a slasher movie as well. Um, so maybe one, maybe some, maybe all of those movies may make their way somewhere down the road. But your next is what we're stuck on. Yeah. Now, I showed you the trailer first. 
did you enjoy the movie more than you thought you would because of the trailer? Yeah. Yeah. Because the trailer yeah. kind of plays it as if the killers are in control all the way through it. Yeah. And that's not what the movie's like at all. And I said to you before we started watching it, there's a twist in it, something that changes in the movie and it kind of makes it amazing. Um, so, let's give some details and then we're going to get your thoughts on it. So, uh, before we do that, we're going to show you the trailer for the movie, kind of yeah. teaser spot trailer, yeah. and it's going to play in the video or on the podcast. And yeah. when we come back... We'll be discussing it right after this. Don't miss the freshest horror movie in decades. Starring this house. I think someone's upstairs. This wolf. They've been watching us for days. This cat. This wasn't a random attack. This sheep. Why would anybody do this? And this girl. Grab anything that might make a good weapon. never seen you act like this before. Well, it's a unique situation. <laughs> in theaters August 23rd. And welcome back. So you've just seen the trailer for your next. Um, let's give you some details about this one. So this yeah. is directed by Adam Wingard. Um, the writer in the movie is a guy called Simon Barrett, who actually plays one of the killers in one of the masks in the movie. And we were talking about the weird actors that are in this that are actually filmmakers. Uh, so in this movie, you have Sharni Vinson, who plays Erin, who... Your favourite character, yeah. Yeah. You thought Erin was badass. Yeah. Uh, you've got Joe Swanberg, who played the older brother, Drake. He's a movie director, as well as an actor. Yeah. A.G. Bowen, who plays Crispin. Crispin is a director as... Sorry, A.G. Bowen is a director as well as an actor. Yeah. Um, Nicholas Tucci, who plays Felix. Now, you said you thought you'd seen him in other things. I'm just going to check, because... I swear he's been in other things before. Um, Maybe... I don't know. The thing about these, you never know. He's been in 41 movies, so I would like to think... He seems so familiar. I'm looking down and there's n nothing here on that list that even remotely what? looks like something you would have seen. So it must just look similar to someone you've seen in things before. Yeah. Right? So that was Nicholas Tucci. He plays um, the youngest brother, Felix. Uh, you have Z, played by Wendy Glenn, who you are... Like, straight away you were like, she doesn't seem very bothered about anything that's happening, so you were onto her. Yeah. You'd sense it. She was, uh, she was acting fishy. Yeah. Uh, you have Margaret Laney, who plays Kelly. Right? Ke um, Kelly was, Kelly was uh, Kelly's the one that is the wife of the older brother. Yeah. You've got Amy Simons, who in herself is actually a director as well. I forgot <laughs> about that. She's a really good director. Why um, is as well as an actress. I think that's the joke in this movie. It's, I'm not going to try and explain what mumblecore is, but this was classed as a mumblecore movie, so it's basically, there's not a... It's a lot of people that are in the film industry that are all friends that are all working together. Um, so you have Amy Simons, uh, and then you have Ty West, who played the guy, uh, Tariq, the filmmaker, who gets shot with Arrow at the beginning. Oh, bro, I feel bad for So him. Ty West is a horror director as well, and then kind of... Bringing it out towards the end here, Simon Barrett plays Tiger Mask, Lane Hughes plays Fox Mask, Larry Fesden plays the neighbour who dies at the beginning. He's also oh, a filmmaker right. yeah. slash actor. Um, oh you also have um, Paul, the, the dad, who's played by Rob Morin, and then the wonderful Barbara Crampton, who plays the mother. Now, if you're my age, yes. you grew up watching movies with Barbara Crampton in it. In the 80s, she was in the hundreds of horror movies and um, then she took a bit of time off and when she came back she was a bit older and your next I think was the first movie that I was fully aware that she was back doing acting so it's kind of cool lastly the synopsis for this one is <coughs> if you're ready uh, the synopsis for this movie is when the Davison family comes under attack during their wedding anniversary getaway the gang of mysterious killers soon learn that one of the victims harbours a secret talent for fighting back Mm -hmm. And that'll be our buddy Erin. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Did you enjoy your next? Yes. You, you did enjoy it. Yeah. Why did you enjoy it? Because it was like... I really like the fine parts where like um Erin... Starts fighting back. Yeah, it's like especially when she got the hammer. Yes, yes. Um, like, um, so in, in slasher movies, there's a, a kind of movie writing... 
shorthand, like a trope, like something they do in all these movies, which is called The Final Girl, right? Yeah. And The Final Girl, you've already watched Scream, you've already watched Halloween, there's usually a character who is a woman, because Final Girl, but she will overcome all the odds and fight back against the killer. And even though the killer is stronger, bigger, she's usually a man, more powerful, she will by the end of the movie have levelled up so much that she yeah. just like obliterates them and that's the that's the kind of thing now in a lot of horror movies what tends to happen is the final girl is usually quite a quiet girl who she maybe reads books she doesn't drink with her friends she doesn't party um, but by the end of the movie somehow she's become almost superhuman um, yeah. and this movie and I can this is one of the reasons I really like your next there is a reason given for why Erin is a complete badass. Tell the listeners what that reason is. Because she grew up on what was it called? Like a survival survival camp. Yeah, survival camp. So she was um she was taught how like in it's kinda like Fallout if you've ever played Fallout before, um like how nuclear explosions go off and then like all the power goes out, everybody has to hide in shelters. Just in case that ever happens, that's what um a survival camp is. Yep. She says that basically for the first 15 years of her life, her dad got very paranoid that the world would run out of resources, kind of Mad Max style, and um, she would have to learn to live off the land and defend herself. So she went through about 15 years of that sort of upbringing, and then her mum moved her to America, and then she started an ordinary life. But when, for lack of a better word, when shit kicks off um, in the house, that instinct snaps in and she starts devising booby traps, uh, using makeshift weapons, yeah. and kind of moves into, a, like, I'm going to get us all out of here. Um, so you've got that. Mm-hmm. The movie is quite smart because it starts off with one way. So you think, at first, all these people are just trying to murder people. Yeah, yeah. But then there is a reveal in the movie later on yeah. that actually some of the family members are actually involved with this. And it's explained, what was the reason that the family was being killed for? Because the dad in the family was really rich yep. and the brothers, I'm pretty sure, are like quite selfish and they want the money, so they paid people to go out and kill their family. Yeah, so they are trying to hotshot their inheritance. Yeah. Now, I'm just going to let you know, dad doesn't have a lot of money, right? So don't pay anyone to wear a rubber mask and try and kill Dad off because you won't get many pennies, right? Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't do that in the first place. Oh, the, why are you smiling? <laughs> why are you smile there? Twinkle no, in the eye, I can I'm see not, it. I'm not. No, I would I, never I, do I that. I would never do that, Dad. Not, not I. Not Winter. Winter would never do that. Who would I, I podcast with? Um, so... I'm not impressed. <laughs> so, you, so you enjoyed that aspect. Do you think that kind of made sense? And you clocked something very early in the movie that actually it was about, I think it was my second viewing before I was like, oh, they don't ever show him back on camera again. They show you everyone dying in this movie except Crispin, Mm -hmm. who disappears and almost five minutes after he disappeared off screen, you were like that, there's Crispin. (laughs) Like, I've not seen Crispin. (laughs) Did you think when you hadn't seen him for a wee while that maybe he could be involved with it? I thought he... um... I thought he was just trying to keep like himself safe or he got killed. Right, right. So, like, because when Dad watched it the first time, he just assumed that he was still at the neighbour's house or he was still, still trying to get help. Mm. So when he arrived at the end, I was like, oh, right, I didn't know that. Oh, even though E.J. Bowen, the actor that plays him, usually plays villains in every movie that he's in. He doesn't tend to play the hero. Um, I still thought, all right, this is, you know, he's, he's off screen. Um, like yourself though the first time I watched this movie Z straight away I was like oh there's something wrong with her um, uh-huh. and then yeah. by association Felix this, the youngest son her yeah. boyfriend I kind of thought there was something going on there as well so it wasn't a, a big surprise um, let's talk about the score in the movie the soundtrack because it was something you noticed and you kind of got you were like yeah this is cool it reminds me of um, that calm choose guy Awesome. Calm Truths, yes, yeah, so yeah, Synthwave. Yeah. Synthwave is a genre. Uh, it's the sort of stuff that Dad likes to listen to when he's playing computer games or driving in the car. <laughs> um, and it, it does, it, it gets a very... I mentioned John Carpenter 
Um, yeah, John does. Carpenter tends to do a lot of the music for his own movies. So he makes the movies and then does the soundtracks and he uses a lot of synths and stuff there. So when you watch like Halloween, um, or the not less the thing because he didn't do the score for the thing, but if you watch movies like Halloween, for example, that yeah. soundtrack is written by him. So uh, it reminded me a little bit of that. It's kind of 80s vibe. You said Stranger Things. I said Stranger Things. At first, which it is right. It reminds me of the intro. Like, plus it's all... It's supposed to be like set in the 80s or 90s, so it makes sense. Yeah. So, there's okay. that. And um, will we talk about... Will we do final scores? Is there anything else you want to say about the movie? Not anything really. you didn't like? Anything that I didn't like? When people were kissing. Right, I wonder if that right is because yep, I used to be the same when I was your age. Um, <sighs> yeah. So, like, any kissing scenes are bad. Yeah. Right. Um, cool. Well, let's say, uh, if that's the only thing, that was the only thing you didn't like, everything else you liked? Yeah. Cool, right. So. Th- Except from someone who kills her, because someone who, like, you know, when the guy got his foot. Right, stood on the nail. The, yeah, oh, yeah. Give me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> give me the heebie jeebies. Um, I'm the same, not with the nail, but when the guy's hand comes through the window and she stabs him right oh, there. Oh, you imagine just pinching there. <laughs> yeah, not nice. Uh, right, so let's do let's do traditional scores, and then we'll do, we'll talk about skull yeah. scores. We'll try and go through all the kills and see work at how many you would consider rad and yeah. badass, and how many aren't. And um, so let's do the traditional scores, which is one through five. One is hated it, two is didn't like it, three is liked it, four is really liked it. Five has loved it, and you can do point fives. I can do point five. In between, um, what would you give your next? 4.5 I'm with you on that one I'm a yeah. 4.5 for your next yeah. as well I think it's like really really good it's a ton of fun it's not a long movie it's an hour and a half yeah um, and it, it doesn't overstate its welcome you get loads of violence and loads of kills and it doesn't it drag yeah. like the movie doesn't drag at all uh, right I'm going to talk you through the kills and I'm going to count on this hand till we get to 5 yeah. if we get to 5 if we get to 5 so there's two kills at right at the very very beginning Right with the the neighbor. Yeah. Right, we don't see the we don't see the girl die. Yeah. But we see the guy that comes yeah. out of the shower die, but he dies off screen. So we see the slice, and then the blood goes that way. Yeah. Are any of those kills rad? No. No. Right. So we're fine with that. Uh, the next kill is Tariq who gets shot with the arrow in the head. No. No. So that no. is a, that is a no. The next kill after that is the daughter. Oh, that runs yeah. at the door, the door opens and there's a, a line there and she slits, it, slits her throat and yeah. falls over and dies. Is that a... Yeah, that's... You're like, it's that, a kill one, you don't expect it. Yeah, that's right. rad, That's rad, not badass, but rad. That, that's rad, right, so that's we've rad. got rad there, so that we've got our first skull. Um, the next death after that is the mum, who dies on the bed. Oh. We don't see her die, though. But, but but when you see her, she's got like a knife in her eye. She's got a machete mm. through her head, yeah. So, can we class that as a... We didn't actually see the death, we, we see, see what happened. If, if we saw the death, then I would give it a badass. Yep. But I'm not going to give it a rad, so not rad. Uh, so there we go. Right, so we're still sitting at one. Yep. Uh, the next person that dies after the wife is the wife of the oldest brother. Who oh. runs to the house and gets thrown through the glass. Yeah. And then she gets an axe in the side of her head. Is that a skull or That's not? Rad. That's rad. That's right. rad. So we're, we're sitting at two. Um, the next death after that is the dad, who gets oh. cut along the throat. Right, okay, I did not like that kill, so no. Right, so we're still nah. sitting at two. Um, killer who gets smashed in the head with a hammer. That's badass, that's badass. <laughs> that's right. So we've got three, we've got three. Um, after that, we have uh, the brother who gets stabbed loads in the chest with the oh, screwdrivers. Um, no, that gave me the heebie-jeebies. Right, so that's not one. Uh, we then get the next guy in the mask getting stabbed in the head with a knife. Ooh. No, man, I have, to, I have to save the skulls, I'm saving yeah, them. You're saving your skulls. Saving them. Right, so we're still sitting at three. Um, the final killer in the mask dies by getting smacked in the head with a log. Oh. Lots of times when the light's flashing. 
That was badass. So we're giving it four. Uh, so all we need is one more and we've hit maximum <laughs> marks. Um, the next two deaths are Felix, who dies with a blender on the top of his head. Badass, badass, <laughs> top tier, top tier. My favourite kill, favourite kill. He deserved it. He deserved it. He deserved then you it. have his girlfriend who gets stabbed in the head. Oh my gosh, I'll... Can I give it one more score? This you time, can give it this one, time, this time. one at maximum five. So like you can give it as many as you want beyond now. Yeah, okay. That was rad. Right, so not we're, badass, but rad. Right, so we're still we're still doing well. Um and then Crispin. Obviously, yeah, Crispin. Crispin who gets stabbed in the side of his neck and then through the eye. And then her line was really cool, but also badass. Yeah, badass. right. So we're 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 well over five now. And then the very last death of the movie is oh. the police officer who takes an axe to the chest. No. Right? No, no. So, like, we're scoring maximum five. Comfortably <laughs> over five. Yeah. Right. So is it safe to say that you really enjoyed your next? Yes. Yes. Wicked. Wicked. Anything else you want to say about the movie? Anything else I want to say about the movie? I think that... What's... Erin? Erin, yeah. Sharni Vinson is the name of the actress, yeah, but it's Erin's character. a character. Yeah. I just think that her fighting skills are really good. I think that she's just a great actor in general, so... Yeah, I'm the same... She doesn't... I'm not aware of her coming back to do any horror movies since, and I kind of feel like we're missing out because she's really good in this. Yeah. Uh, you'd ask me if there was a sequel. Uh, there is not a sequel. I don't know how you would do a sequel unless she got in the same position again. <laughs> and they'd be like, die hard. Oh, like, I mean, oh, how can the same no, thing wait. happen to the same guy twice? Or maybe, like... There's more serial killers that find out what she did to the other serial killers and they just... Maybe she is arrested at the end of the movie and she's mm. sent away to prison. And then she... With her reputation as being like a badass killer and then people in prison try and kill her. And then she kills them back yeah. and then she gets more time in prison. Yeah, there we go. I yeah. don't know. We're, we're, we're fantasy writing here. Um... Cool. Uh, so that's um, our first episode back. This yeah. is Winter Reviews, a horror movie, season two, looking at slashers. We've got five more episodes that we're going to do this year. We keep more, it shorter cause... because I think it's more manageable if we just do shorter seasons. And yeah. um, that's not to say that we won't ever come back and do slasher movies because um, we can do them under a different theme. Um, but yeah, this is the first one down. I don't know what our next movie is going to be, um, but the review will drop sometime next month. Will so. Mom be in that? Uh, no, no. Oh. We'll, we'll save Mum for the finales. Yes, yes, that sounds like a we'll great always, idea. We'll always bring her in the finale like we did like with the Blair Witch idea. Project. Um, I think there's at least one Friday the 13th this year, which means we will be doing Friday the 13th Part 4. Yes. Which I know you're very excited for. We need for. to review that by itself, though. Yeah, a lot. That, but yes, itself. it won't be part of the season, but a lot of people consider Friday the 13th Part 4 to be the best Friday the 13th movie ever made so you're going to be in for a good time um, ok I think we're going to bring this in now now that we've got our scores so you gave this a 4.5 Yep. I got a maximum of 5 skulls Yep. I gave it a 4.5 I don't do the skull rating it's just purely for you um, if you're checking this out on YouTube please like, subscribe and hit the bell that way you get notifications when we drop a brand new episode uh, leave comments uh, what did you think of your next um, do you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed it do you enjoy the kills do you wish there was a sequel and if so what sequel would make sense to you if you're checking us out on Spotify or on the Anchor podcast apps where you get video and podcast make sure you're subscribed over there answer the question that pops up at the end of the episode and if you're checking out the audio version of this on any of the podcatchers out there then make sure you're subscribed. You get access to the over 1,300 episodes on the RSS feed as well as all future episodes coming up. Lastly, Winter, yep. before we jump out of here, before, before we get out, would you like to say goodbye to the listeners, please? Yes. Okay, and I need to sit up in the chair for this. Into the microphone, check into the up camera. In the chair. Okay. How did I, how did I do that? Okay, right. Goodbye, everybody, and do what my dad said, please. Because my dad's amazing. Aww. He's he's the best dad that you can ask for, okay? Aww. So please do what he said. I don't take compliments well, but thank you. Um, all that's left for me to say is wherever you are, whatever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours, please take care of yourselves out there. It's Duncan McLeish broadcasting live from under the stairs and I am signing off.